remember that when I started in this part of the AV industry that was, roughly speaking, about 10 years ago, that there were maybe just half a dozen companies, and I'm, maybe I'm being generous here, but half a dozen companies who were really serious about media servers uh, or related software playout technologies. Um, at the moment, I think um, we were looking at more like 30 companies, uh, maybe even 40, uh, with the really, really serious contenders, maybe looking at uh, 20, 20 companies now, that obviously focus on slightly different aspects and slightly different markets. So you've got, you've got some of our competitors who are more oriented towards the live entertainment side of things, then some are more oriented towards the installation business as such. And um, the, the good thing is obviously there's a lot of pressure on everyone involved to, to keep innovating. Uh, the bad news I find is that there's now so many tools that seriously it's not a perfect situation for the end customer. In the same way that you'd say digital video editing software is out there and you have maybe half a dozen of solutions and that's it and then a couple of more specialized versions. No matter who you're working for, who you're working with, you can always find operators for those systems and so in, in a sense there's, there's really a lot of media server solutions out there. And because of the fact that the market seems so saturated with even pretty serious solutions out there, um, we had to go back to the beginning of everything, I think, and think about, really contemplate, particularly the developers. I mean, you know, I'm the marketing guide, so, you know, don't pretend that I have anything to do with the genius that our uh, hardware and software specialists have put into this. But, but, but still, it was, it was I think, a, a general feeling in the team that we had to go back to basics and to look at how the market and our customers and their work has developed in the last 10 to 15 years. Because from my point of view, and I'm, I'm not I'm really not just saying this because I work for this company, what has happened is that you've got a lot of amazing solutions there, but in the same way as may have happened in, let's say, like uh, 3D animation software, special effects software, most of those software solutions were programmed based on a, on a mindset that was like, you know, 2005, which is not bad. That's, you know, they, they've been developed for so long, or maybe the year 2000, they've got all these amazing features and more features and more features. But I honestly believe that we're now coming to a point where usability is, at, or should be at the center of our ideas about where this is going. And it's not just about making things easy so it's easy, it really is so that people who use these kinds of solutions that we provide, that they can focus on their work instead of saying, well, I focused on the product I'm using to actually get my work done. And I've had a lot of conversations um, with other industry friends in the last couple of months, even completely unrelated to our products. And I, I've, I felt that th some of them echoed the exactly same ideas that it's wonderful that we have all these, whether it's super immersive 3D sound in multiple ways, whether it's uh, certain holographic things, whether it's um, you know super 3D projection mapping, whether it's 8K beyond, whether it's 120 frames per second, 16 bit. And that's amazing, it really is. I mean, obviously, you know, we have the raw server, so, you know, we'll be the last people on earth to say that there's not a market um, for super high resolution, uncompressed content playout systems. But the point I'm making, or that made me think, is that do we do enough so that our customers can actually enjoy working on their projects? I'm in a lucky position or in a happy position, but I could see quite early how Pixera would evolve, you know, because we will also sort of integrate our technology as well. And the whole change of philosophy between the old Wings Viosa media server and Pixera on the new side is astonishing, you know. We are not talking about a 2D layering timeline concept anymore, but more of this 3D world, free philosophy, playground philosophy style thing. And I think especially this ease of use that puts the ID before the technology, this can be a changer for this industry. Because a lot of our products are mainly focused on the technical aspect, on the technical user interface. And I think it's time for a change in this philosophy. AB Stumpfer is a family-run business, you know, and family-run business don't tend to move too fast. <laughs> and I was working overseas with Stumpfer and I was impressed by the technology. 
but the immense of speed, the change that lately occurred at this company is really impressive from the outside. You know, it's change of management, change of philosophy, change of technology, new software products. I think it's great to see how they react to a changing market situation. And I think that the new software solutions alongside with hardware and service will have a different impact. You know, it will, it's a complete new philosophy. I can understand probably that it's also quite difficult once in a while for a company that does a business for a long time, you know. And, but I think they are in a very good way to do this. The kind of software we build um, integrates access to technology. Uh, so there are a lot of individual technologies which to have an effect on the final audience uh, need to work well together. And our feeling was that uh, the industry as a whole came from a position of saying, well, if we could just make that possible in any way, that would be enough. But we feel that to reach the next level, uh, the user has to be able to easily reach results um, with, uh, with all these technologies. So in tying them together in a way uh, that makes uh, users more effective, I think that's going to be the contribution of this software. Uh, a lot of the software's uh, design uh, is driven from starting with, with emptiness in the sense that an ideal software would just uh, immediately implement your will in the world so there, you wouldn't need an interface. Of course, that doesn't exist. It would be magic. Thinking back from that, we come to what are the core concepts that you will have to be dealing with anyway uh, to even conceptualize what you're doing. And that's what we, uh, and, and uh, to boil those down into what is really central. That is uh, what gave rise to the basic structure of the software. And it's separated into three perspectives. They all influence the same creative space. So you're always working in one, uh, one world. There's always one result. All your interactions are, are adding up to, but you have three perspectives on that the creative space. And the first is what we call the screens where you uh, decide what are what actually um, is going to receive the uh, the visualization that I want the audience to see. Thinking again from that emptiness, you can't have uh, you need something where what you're trying to show actually shows up, and that's the what we call the the first tab, the screens tab. Let's say some generic screens here in this case. And it's almost like, okay, these are just, these are just rectangles. We we're worried at some point, and this is part of a Pixar presentation, if you start with this, with things like this, you sometimes get the reaction of you're looking into the, into the people you're talking to and they're like, well, we've been working in this industry for 15 years, 20 years. Why are you just showing me an interface where I can arrange some squares? You know, are you kidding? And, and that's so. In a sense, there, there's a there's a moment where it's where it's almost uh, too simple. Right? You begin to get worried that people think you're, you know, you're you're not uh, responsive to the challenges they face. But again, uh, this can then extend. You know, and uh, in the screens tab, you can set up your screens. But we also wanted it uh, to be possible to uh, add in things which uh, aren't. Um, aren't screens, so you can have a, an idea of what your entire venue is going to look like. Um, but you, then you can say that some of these things are in fact uh, going to be screens and just uh, drag content on them. We're uh a total solutions provider, so we give out leasings, we distribute, we um, rent out equipment, and um, we have, I think, one of the largest stocks in Europe in uh, AV equipment. So a media server can be used for anything, and that's, that's the problem for a lot of manufacturers, so there is no limit. Tomorrow they want to do a projection on a building with 50 projectors and they want to control the content, they want to control gestures, movement, interaction, and it all comes together in the media server. 
it's 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 very complex and and there's not many products in the market that can actually deal with all those aspects um, you need to, to be able to button control it touch control it uh, yeah as I said gestures like there's ways to just do movements and your content has to respond it needs a lot of processing power you need a lot of rendering uh, in it and of course programming and that's that's I think one of the key features is to get and also one of the most difficult things is to make everything very easy to do because it's such a complex thing people need complex things and every time when you think yeah now we can manage everything somebody comes with a great new idea that will change again everything and you need new stuff and so the market yeah it's 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 difficult there is no no specific thing we do car shows uh, fixed installations in museums there's uh, corporate uh, presentations uh, building mappings as i said object mappings this is again something what the new software will uh, make more easy to do also is in 3d space start mapping that's like yeah that's very important i think and our clients um, are mostly in the car show industry, um, fixed installations, so museums, and then I hope now with the new software to also reach into this really creative market where, where, where we can get the clients that are doing crazy stuff, mapping, mapping a, a building in 3D with content flying around it and, and dragons and everything you can imagine. Um, so that's what I hope to, that our the clients we can reach, the part of the market we can reach with that. A lot, of, a lot of hardware and softwares will also only go specifically to one side of that market. And I think now, again, with the software, we can go a lot broader. So we get a lot broader part of the market. With Pixera, they want to change everything and make it completely user-friendly, like intuitive. You don't need five days of training to start working with the system. You just, yeah. You get onto it and you see a button, you click it and you get immediate results. You can drag something, get results. And I think that's what, yeah, what they want to go to with Pixera right now. We have a separate tab, which we call mapping. There you uh, do all the, all the setup, all the configuration for how, for example, projectors will relate to those streets. And then you will have to want, you will want to actually show content uh, on your screens. And that's where we have the third tab, compositing, where you can use uh, real-time video, video editing capabilities to um, create content which will appear on the screens. And uh, uh, when you switch between these perspectives, that's a low cost. Uh, that's the idea. So it's easy to just uh, jump on over to the screens tab, move the screen a little bit. When you return, for example, to the compositing tab, you will see that uh, your selections, all your values are as you have left them. I guess I can say that most or all of the ideas which you can find in our products are coming from customers. So all the ideas like uncompressed, quality, user interface, 3D mapping, easy handling, these are always requests and ideas from customers. And um, I guess if we say, um, we just realized the ideas of our customers and put them together in a piece of software. I guess that's the way we work. The new user interface, Pixera, combined with the render engine, which is already doing a good job on the market, is a perfect combination. Today's business is not about providing just a media server anymore, unfortunately, you know. I personally would just like to sell software and let people do this, but it's not the truth. Um, we as software vendors need to be very versatile and very helpful to our customer because they demand solutions that are very complex now. It's not just like one tool fits it all, but they need, we need to give also advice, support, and in some cases even hardware, you know. So this business is changing and that's one of the reasons why I like to work with AV Stumpfer because I think they always had a high dedication to the customer itself. You know, you never had the feeling that this is just purely about selling things and just purely about business. but. Dedication to customer, we are a niche industry, you know, we are a small industry and dedication to customer is one of the key aspects to make everybody happy. We are not solely working with Stumpfer, we do our own stuff, you know, but every time I do business with AV Stumpfer, I'm just impressed how much dedication they can show to mutual customers. We have a core team of our development team, but the 
Core team has to be feed from the operators and from the customers because they have they are on the jobs outside. They know exactly the issues which they have to solve. They help us to develop the software in the right directions. So we work very close and we try to be in contact with our customers and with our operators because on the one hand, yeah, you have to have a good product, a good hardware and a good software. But on the other hand, you have to have a good relationship to your customers because it's always based on trust. So the business is always based on trust. So you also, it's a personal uh, business. It's not just selling a product and job done. So it's also a very trustful uh, relationship. To be honest, a lot of customers are not just customers. From my point of view, they're really friends already. So we have really a friendship uh, because we have to solve issues together. So it's really a kind of friendly relationship already. So we're talking sometimes each day to, uh, uh, to each customer because if we are involved in big projects, uh, we want to, yeah, to solve the issues together. I'm obviously, arguably, the least technical guy. As the marketing guy, I'm I could be the least technical guy in the company. And I'm really excited about this because I learned how to video edit because I come from a TV and directing background. Um, I don't claim to be more technical than that. But when I was introduced to Pixera, I actually had the feeling even I could actually sink my teeth into this and at least, you know, really get to grips with some of the basic stuff that a lot of our customers do. I, you know, this, this software is not going to turn me into a media server operator. You need years of experience for that. You need to know about uh, so many different, you know, protocols, signals and all this. But just the, the basic approach seems so non-threatening. And at the same time, it seems so 2018 or 2020 in terms of the mindset. And I just feel there's so many great products out there from other companies that are great in terms of what they can do, but they're not necessarily amazing in the way that they force you to make your way through another sub menu, another sub menu, and then, oh, look what you've done. It's great, but does it have to be that hard? There is a need in the market for usability taking center stage when working with these kinds of uh, digital media environments that we're involved with.